is the first of our lectures on chapter two, uh, which is about the early English uh, settlements in the New World, and this is going to focus on Virginia. Uh, so here we go. The first attempt in, in, of the English to settle the New World was at a place called Roanoke, uh, which is in the Carolinas today. Um, but the whole colony disappeared. Uh, it, supplies came after uh, nobody from England coming for three years, and all the people were missing. Nothing was left except the word Croatan carved into a tree, which nobody knows what means. Um, I'm sure you have questions about that, but I have no answers for you. Uh, it's a big mystery. We don't know what happened. Google it. Check it out. In 1606, so about 20 years later, the King of England gives a charter to the Virginia Company um, to found a colony. Uh, a, a, this colony is going to be called Jamestown, named after the King of England, uh, James I. That's who this picture is up, up here. In 1607, three ships leave carrying 144 men. Uh, 40 of them die on the voyage. Only 104 arrive in Jamestown. They settle on the Ch in the Chesapeake Bay on the James River um, in a low, swampy, wooded area surrounded by Native Americans. And for the first 17 years, this place is pretty much a complete disaster. Uh, the swamp is filled with malaria. Um, the, the English believed that they would simply walk off the boats and there would be gold just laying around in piles and they would stuff their pockets with it and go home and be fabulously wealthy. Uh, it didn't work out that way. There really wasn't any gold. Uh, the English also did something incredibly stupid. They went, the, the people who came in that first voyage tended to be wealthy people from the cities who thought that there was just easy money to be made here in America. Uh, now, if I were going to set up a new colony in the middle of a completely uncivilized uh, land, I would go get like a bunch of farmers and people who knew how to live off the land because they could grow food and build houses and stuff. But the English don't do that. They bring a bunch of people from the cities who aren't used to doing any labor. And consequently, nobody really does any work. They don't plant foods. They don't build shelters. And so these first few years are going to be a complete disaster. They do make a little bit of money off things like lumber and tar and pitch and iron. Um, but generally, it's a failure. There are no women at all in the beginning. Uh, by 1608, so the next year, when more ships come, uh, what they find is 38 survivors of, out of those original 144 that left England. Uh, and on that ship is going to be John Smith, who at the age of 28 is already a famous adventurer and explorer, well known. He's going to basically become a dictator of the colony and start forcing people to work, even the rich guys who came over here with no expectation of working. Um, because nobody had planted any food and they were starving, he's going to lead raids of the Native Americans. He's going to attack the local Powhatan um, tribes. And after uh, losing 76 out of 104 settlers in the first winter, in the second winter, fewer than a dozen people will die. Uh, so John Smith really does save the colony. Now, this is the part where I get to ruin your childhood. John Smith at one point is captured by the Powhatan Indian, uh, Indian tribe. And there is, of course, this legend that has sprung up that Pocahontas saves him because she was in love with him. Pocahontas was a real-life uh, princess. She was a, the daughter of the chief of that tribe. Um, this is complete fiction. He was captured, and Pocahontas was there. And Pocahontas apparently did say something to her dad, but we don't know what she said. She could have said, please don't kill him. She should have said, cut his head off, daddy. She could have said, can Susie spend the night? We have no idea. All we know is that they were all there at the same time. I hope there wasn't a romance like you saw in the movie because uh, John Smith, by the time this happens, is almost 30 and Pocahontas is 11 or 12, so that's kind of gross. Um, so hopefully I've completely ruined that Disney movie for you. Uh, we'll talk more about Pocahontas in a minute, though. In uh, 1609, the Virginia Company gets permission to expand the colony and they send a guy named Delaware, who incidentally uh, Delaware will be named after, to be the governor of Virginia. Um, he offers ownership in the company. This is a private enterprise, I should point out. They're not coming here for religious freedom. They're not coming here for any ideals. They're simply coming to make money. He offers ownership in the company uh, to anybody who will come over here and work. And they begin the indentured system uh, here in the New World, um, which means you get a free ticket over here. They will bring you over here and you don't have to pay anything. If you agree to work for seven years, is more or less a slave. And so in 2009, nine more ships with 600 people, and this time even a few women and children will arrive. Two of them will, will crash on the way, though. The winter of 2009 and 2010 is called the starving time, as the colony once again uh, is unable to feed itself. 
Native Americans angry at the raids that John Smith had been leading. He's gone, by the way. He fell into a fire and, and uh, burnt himself and had to go back to England. But the raids he had led had, had caused the Indians to fight back, and they had surrounded the, the colony, and so there was no way to get food. They massacre the livestock, and the, uh, the settlers are forced to eat dogs, cats, rats, snakes, toadstools, horse hides, and even the corpses of dead men um, in, that, in that winter. And in a winter that started with almost 700 settlers, by the spring only 60 are left al alive. When the weather gets better, they say, yeah, screw this, and decide to go back to England. They've had enough. But on the way back, they run into ships bringing resupply, as well as Governor De La War, the new governor. And he talks them into turning around and coming back, and Jamestown is once again saved. The colony doesn't really get stabilized until it becomes profitable. And that won't happen until a, an Englishman named John Rolfe will discover a new and superior strain of tobacco uh, compared to what's being grown in the Caribbean at the time. Tobacco had become quite popular in Europe um, when Columbus had brought it back uh, more than 100 years earlier. But the tobacco being grown in the Virginia region will turn the Virginia colony into an extremely successful uh, economic enterprise. <clears throat> Soil exhaustion becomes a problem because once you grow tobacco for a few years, it depletes everything out of the soil. And so what ends up happening is they, they use the farmland right on the coast first, and then once it gets depleted, they have to constantly move inward and inward. And this causes the settlers to start pushing in interior, pushing into the west. Tobacco is also labor intensive. You need lots of workers to, to do this. And so they, they establish what's called the head right system. And the way this works is, if you come to Jamestown and you bring an indentured servant, for every person you bring, actually it could be your own children or your wife, but for every person you bring, you are given 50 acres a person. And so what would happen is uh, people in England would bring themselves, their wife, all their kids, and they would bring as many indentured servants as they could afford to bring, come over here and get a few hundred acres. England is interested in Jamestown once it starts producing tobacco and therefore money, and they begin sending skilled labor, and they actually, the British government sends over 100 women uh, to try to create families in a more stable life here uh, in, in the New World. Oh, I didn't click it. There's John Rolfe and Pocahontas. Pocahontas will marry John Rolfe, the guy who first cultivated tobacco. Uh, he will, she'll change her name to Rebecca Rolfe. Uh, she will return to England with him and become a major celebrity. She'll travel all over England speaking about what life was like as a Native American. Unfortunately, she's also going to get sick and die uh, in her early 20s, so that's kind of the sad story of Pocahontas. Although I will say that Pocahontas too is about her meeting and falling in love with John Rolfe, which is historically correct, more or less. In 1619, the Virginia colony, realizing that having a government that's... Uh, weeks away by boat is ineffective, will establish their own self-rule with the House of Burgesses. Now, they're still a royal colony and answerable to the king, um, but uh, they do begin having meetings and, and setting their own rules and laws. It is a representative government with each plantation getting to pick one member to go and serve in it. Um, in that same year, in 1619, the year that we bring democracy to America, we also bring slaves to America, and a great irony. Now, slaves are not used in large numbers early on, but the first ones do arrive in 1619. Um, in 1622, war will break out between the Powhatan Indians, that's Pocahontas' tribe, uh, and the settlers. The Powhatan will launch a sneak attack and kill 347 of the settlers, which is a, a huge percentage of, of the colony, including Pocahontas' husband, uh, John Rolfe. This war will go on for 20 years and will be absolutely devastating to both sides. But eventually, by 1642, uh, the Powhatan are defeated. The war does bankrupt the Virginia Company, and the crown takes over the colony, so instead of being run by the Virginia Company, it begins being run by the King of England. Just to give you an idea of how devastating Jamestown was, in the first 17 years of existence, 8,500 settlers came. More than 6,500 of those settlers died an unnatural death, either through disease or through violence. So this was an incredibly dangerous place to be. Oops. The colonists, by the way, believed that their European civilization was superior to the Native Americans, and that made killing the Native Americans okay. They had adopted this attitude when they tried to take Ireland and the Irish fought back, and, and they eventually, the, 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 the British eventually gave up on trying to civilize the Irish, or by civilize, I mean make them kneel before the king. 
and begin to just murder the Irish on sight. And by the time they get to America, they're already kind of predisposed to that idea. And so fairly quickly we get to a point where we're just killing the Indians um, uh, as soon as we see them. The colonists won, uh, curiously enough, by adapting Native American technologies. Uh, they will feed themselves with things like beans, maize, which is corn, of course, and pumpkin, all of which they learned to grow from the Native Americans. Uh, the Native Americans uh, actually tended to have superior technology. I'll talk more about this in another lecture, um, uh, and, and a lot, which was adapted for that environment, and the colonists adopted a lot of that. I should mention here, just kind of tack on Maryland at the end here. Maryland's an interesting place. It was created as the dream of a man named George Calvert, who was an English nobleman with the noble title of Lord Baltimore. He was a Catholic, and he dreamed of a place that Catholics could go to get away from the Protestant government of England, if you remember from our, our first chapter lectures. When he dies, his son inherits the charter the king has given him, <clears throat> and in 1634, two ships bring 300 colonists um, and establish a land called Maryland. Now, it's called Maryland, uh, because of a nice coincidence for the founder anyway. Maryland was the king's wife, Mary was the king's wife's name. It was uh, uh, Lord Baltimore's wife's name. And of course, he's Catholic and Catholics revere uh, the Virgin Mary. So it's actually named after all three of those. They actually play nice with the Native Americans. They get along with them, they work together with them. But by 1649, not many Catholics have come over and Catholics are a minority. The Calverts begin to worry that Catholics will be discriminated against in Maryland, this very colony they set up to protect the Catholics. And so they pass something called the Act Concerning Religion, uh, which says that you're free to, you can't discriminate against anyone for practicing any Christian religion in Maryland. And this is one of the first examples of religious freedom in the New World. In 1635, Maryland establishes its House of uh, Delegates, even though it is officially controlled by Lord Baltimore. Um, and Maryland establishes a strong aristocratic class with huge land holdings. They will also adopt a headright system to try to bring in more labor to work their tobacco plantations um, and will soon begin importing slaves. All right, I'm going to leave it there and we'll pick up with the next one where I'm going to tell you all about Bacon's Rebellion, one of my favorite things in history.